Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get it right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank you today. The blessing of the Lord is on this studio. The blessing of the Lord is being poured out like in no other generation before us. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We praise and worship you today. Thank you for this broadcast and all this radio and television audience all over the world. We praise you. We thank you. And we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise amen. God. Would you join me today in welcoming Professor Greg Stevens to this broadcast thank you, sir. again? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bless you. I tell you what, we, he and I get, to, you know, he and I are doing a book together. And um, I don't know, that thing's going to be big as a dictionary, yes, I guess, for trying to get through with it. But it, it has just gone week after week after week after week. And the, the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of covenant. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's, let's open our Bibles, first of all, to the 138th Psalm, please. 138th Psalm. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness. Has it? Yes, it. Has it? Mark, mark your Bible right there. The mercy of God, the covenant the mercy. The, 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 the greater one blessing the lesser with his mercy and all that he has. And for your truth, for you have magnified your word above your name. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? Greg, uh, let, let me see this outline. Yes, sir. Say, this is a covenant. I, mean, I don't care if it's a marriage covenant or, or what kind of a covenant it is, but we're talking about a blood covenant. Here are the articles of the covenant. It's no good till it's signed. So his word is above his name. His name guarantees this. The name that's above every name that's named guarantees not only the validity, but the absoluteness of the covenants of blood. Praise God. Amen. I, you know, I just kept reading, reading that and reading that. And who it wasn't long, I put a little, I put a little, little red finger pointing at that. Well, of course he did. And Proverbs 10, of course, that's so well known by us all. The 22nd verse, the blessing, say blessing. Blessing. The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. Now that means exactly what it says, Abram, then Abraham was very rich. Mm -hmm. And then Isaac, very wealthy indeed. And he adds no sorrow, sorrow there. He has no toiling. You know I, wrote, that? I wrote that in there, painful toil. Yeah. It's not in there. You don't have to work to get this, no. but you do have to believe it Amen. to receive it. That doesn't mean you go, go sit on your easy chair and just draw your pension. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Faith is the money. Yep. Faith is the money. That's so good. It's your turn. I was reading this uh, in Psalm 138. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness, Hesed, and for thy truth. John the apostle that knew Jesus probably the best out of all of them, described him, he broke it down. I said, I need to, I gotta break this thing down. 
John says, we beheld his glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. truth. So when it's talking about thy truth, it's talking about Jesus. I read that, uh, truth in Hebrew is met. It's the first letter and the last letter and the middle letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It makes a word called met, which is truth. Jesus, he tells John, is the first letter and the last letter. I read that verse in Hebrew just a while ago. There is an left tav, untranslated, sitting right there in the middle of the verse, just sitting there in the Hebrew. And it's like, it's like Jesus, you talked about signing that, yeah. that covenant. It's like he signed that verse. Guys, this is talking about me right here. Yeah. When magnified thy word above thy name. Oh, praise God. And his name's been written on my life in that contract. When he ratified that covenant on the cross, I was written into that. And therefore, yeah, you know what, the you blessings know what, you know what, on me. It's been for a couple of days now. It just keeps coming up. It just keeps coming back to me. Just keep coming back to me. First Peter, second Peter. We don't need to turn there. Okay. That wasn't his name. Jesus changed it. That's right. He could put, he put a covenant true. name on him that he didn't know until Jesus called him that. That's exactly and right. And he became Peter for the rest of his and life. And when did he call him that? It's when Peter told Jesus who he was. Yes, he did. When you acknowledge who you he are is. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's when it happened. And Jesus said, you go, you quote it. What did he say to him? He said, upon this rock, I'll build no. my church and the gates of hell shall not yeah. prevail against it. No, the Flesh very and blood first word he said. Thou art Peter. But he used his name first. He did, Simon. That's the day it happened. That's right. Blessed are you, Simon, Simon. Barjona. Son of Jonah, yeah. You are Peter. You're a rock. Yes. Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. My father revealed this to the you. The revelation of it. Yes. That's God right. built his church on it. That's exactly And right. that day he became Peter, and he's never been Simon Barjona since. It's recorded in heaven his name is Peter. When you acknowledge him, you get the revelation of who he is, and you call out upon him, he will tell you who you are. <laughs> <laughs> happens every Glory time. to God forever. That's what happened with you. You you acknowledged him and then he began to tell you who you are. Glory to God. See, Jesus didn't come to earth, Brother Copeland, to start a new religion. He came here to mend a relationship that had been broken. He came that Garden of Eden moment. He came to re mend that thing. So I asked the Lord about this, the, the two covenants, the the first covenant, the old, we know the old covenant and the new covenant. I said, Lord, I need a, I need an easy way to understand this because they're not different, yet one's better than the other. Help me understand this. God chose by his mercy, by his grace, a group of people called Israel at Mount Sinai, but it was through Abraham. He chose them to be a chosen people and they responded to the word, the Torah. That's what they're still doing today. They respond to the word. And then they get a final judgment or reward based upon how you handle that. But that's, that's the simplest form of the old covenant. He called these people, separated them out, put his name on them. They do the word and they receive the blessing. And I got to looking at us. We were strangers to the covenant. We had no covenant. We were nothing. Mm -hmm. He chose us, <laughs> revealed to us in Jesus, the promised seed that began with Israel, began with Abraham. We respond to his grace by faith in that word, and we get a final reward as a result of it. And I started looking at it. It's, he chose you, you respond to the word, you receive the reward. That's the first covenant. He chose me in Christ Jesus, I responded by faith. And that's what I'm doing all the time, by faith. By faith, I respond to that. I receive the reward. The two covenants are exactly the same. And it goes to that verse right there. I have uh, magnified thy word above thy name. We were both responding to the word in faith. And that's the simplest form that I saw of the two covenants, that they both operate by faith. Greg, it, this just dawned on me. He chose them mm -hmm. 
We chose Jesus. Yes. Just a little. Mm -hmm. He chose them. He had to start because he lost Adam. He had to start in the beginning God. Yes. Well, again, in the beginning God. So he chose them as a people and took them out in order to start this thing. Then through Jesus, we were able to choose him. Mm -hmm. Just a slight difference, but ever so significant. It's ever so significant. And the fact that when he called them out of Egypt, he'll tell Moses, bring them to my presence. And so he brings them to him. And that's, that's exactly what we did. Jesus brings me to the presence of God. That's my covenant connector that brings me yes, to, right. to his presence. It's the exact same covenant, Brother Copeland. Yes, it is. In, in its simplest forms, it's the exact same thing because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The difference being the blood. The blood. That's exactly right. And we have the blood of Jesus applied to my life. I'm not any longer made righteous. I am righteous because now it's been signed. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. It was accounted as done when Jesus agreed before the foundation the of the world. The difference between the blood of a lamb and the blood of the, the, lamb. the lamb. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> Glory to God. But the covenants are exactly the same. They operate by faith, mm -hmm. by faith in that blood. That this is once and for all, final and, and done. We've just not understood that we were born again into really the same covenant. It's just on the other side of it. Yeah, I showed you in my Bible where I, uh, oh, yeah. where I made this, made this mark right here. Yeah, showing that you know this is the difference in in the Bible here. It's a Kenneth Copeland Bible. It's a good one, uh, pointing to this new covenant side. Because I was spending so much time steeped in the First Testament that I still wanted to remind myself visually, this is all finished. I live on this side of the cross now where uh, that is applied to me. Praise God. Praise God, it's a good thing. The blessing, so th this is it, now I live in the blessing. That blessing has been restored, that was lost. That's what Jesus came to do, to restore that. He didn't say that I have all authorities been given to me. Now I gave it to you guys the first time and you messed that up and so I'm not gonna give you all of it back because I don't really trust you guys. No, he didn't do that. He said all authority has been given to me and he gave it right back to us again for us to walk in it and operate. Therefore you go. Therefore you go. Uh, but Greg, when I saw that, uh, you know, you, you begin to learn something a little piece at a time. And over the years and studying the blessing and, and just, whoa, God never changes. Mm -mm. What he says never changes. Mm -mm. People change, he does not. That's the first words Adam ever heard. Yep. When God created him with his words, he didn't hear that. The first words when he became a living, speaking spirit like God, the first thing he heard was, bless. Mm -hmm. The blessing of the Lord mm -hmm. was the first utterance any human being's ear ever heard was blessing. He didn't know what a curse was. He never heard the word curse. It didn't exist. He heard bless and mm -hmm. multiply. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Own the earth <laughs> yes. and fill it. That was his job. And that hadn't changed with us. No, that, you know, and, and when I, and, you know, I studied that thing in pieces, but then I realized God's, God did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. That blessing went all the way through the first covenant, all the way through the second, and it is still in operation today. The <laughs> blessing of the Lord. The sad thing is Christianity somehow morphed into poverty and sickness and 
being pious and all this, that, and that's not part of the blessing at all. That's not a blessing. There's no blessing in there. No, there's not. And, but we morphed into that. Yeah. And we've gotten, and it got us away from the original intent. I think it's an insult to the blood of Jesus to believe that. Yeah. Well, of course it is. Because that's why he came, is to restore us back to that Eden place where we first heard the blessing. I had a guy stop me in the parking lot of, of a shopping center. I just drove up in there in my truck. He saw me, Brother Copeland. And he's smiling until he got up to my, to my truck. Mm. <laughs> Boy, I mean, he's zeroing in on me. Mm. You know? And I, he's a sweet guy. You could tell sure. it, it. But this was really, it was eating on him. This what, it, but you know, it was eating on the devil. Mm. He said, now, God only promised to meet our needs hmm. according to his riches in glory. <laughs> I said, is that right? Yeah. That's right. I said, is the 23rd Psalm for us today? Absolutely. <laughs> well, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yes. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> yeah. but his mind, yeah. his, his, no, let me, let me say what he had been taught. Yes, sir. He, he obviously didn't have enough and he's struggling under it, but he had been taught he was not supposed to have very much right. because all of that was for the Jews, but we are Christian. And we are, you know, like, like God and poverty are tied together with a real short rope, hmm. unless you're a Jew. Then you can have anything you want. No, they have anything they want because they know their covenant. Yeah, no, that's, right. that's it, man. That's right. uh, the, it, I mean, prosperity and healing is just normal for their covenant. Yeah. Well, and so it was with the Greek, too, because it's, that's what it said in Greek. Mm -hmm. Some places it's translated saved. The very same word is translating healed. The very same word is translated made sound. The same word's translated delivered. Mm -hmm. They read it all in one word. If you be, you know, so what does saved mean? It, it means, what does it mean if you're drowning? You're saved. Somebody jerked you out of the water. Well, we got jerked out of darkness. Mm -hmm. But sickness is dark. Yes, sir. We got jerked out of sickness. We got jerked out of poverty yes, sir. because we're blessed. Some people won't let the Bible get in the way of their theology. That's the problem they have. Here's that's what, like a third monkey at the ark. Huh? That's exactly. <laughs> Did you hear that on the victory thought? Did you hear what? He, I, thought, I don't man. know where that came from. I, just, <laughs> I thought, I wish I'd have thought of that. <laughs> that's an old saying from my grandfather. Third monkey. That he, he, he tried to, Brother Copeland, he was trying to toughen me up a little bit. I was getting picked on. And... Uh, <laughs> In, in so sports, funny. and he said, Greg, just like Gregory, he's in heaven now. He says, Gregory, you need to fight like you're the third monkey trying to get on Noah's Ark, <laughs> you know? And so <laughs> that, that just stuck with me, and I don't know why that just rose up in me. Those people, I wanted them to call in. I was trying to get it serious to them. <laughs> you need to call, you need to fight to call in, you know? And that just came out of me, right, fight like the third monkey. Well, it worked, because it tickled me, man. I never heard that in my life. You'll never forget it. No, I won't. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I've never forgot it. So here's the I deal. I can't wait till one of my great grandchildren need to hear that. <laughs> yeah, you need to fight. Like that. When my son went to play college football um, his first year, you know, Matt's not real large. Um, I, I told him, I said, son, and he, he's heard me say it over the years. I said, third monkey. <laughs> that's so, all you need to say. That's all he needs to say. And so the first game we went to, he's standing out on the sidelines in his uniform. I went like that to him. He knew exactly, he big grin on his face. He knew what I meant. Fight like you're the third me. <laughs> Listen, if you know there's only two on there, how, how hard are you going to fight and for it? It's that? raining now. How, yeah, <laughs> you're going to, I'm telling you, one of us is going off and it's not going to be me. But, you know, Brother Copeland, there's a principle there. We got to get that, that serious with the enemy. That's right. We got to contend with our faith like that. <laughs> I can't get over that. 
Yeah, yeah well, it, that's absolutely true. It paints a picture, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Yes, sir. <laughs> We've gotten so fixated on the devil instead of our father and the blessing. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten so, he's, he, we've allowed him to do that to us in religion, that we're so fixated on him that we didn't fixate on, uh, no, 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 I have a covenant yes. with my father. Yes. And because I have a covenant with my father, I'm prosperous and everything I put my hand to yes. prospers. Yes. Well, I, you and I both learned from Brother Hagin that, yes, sir. and he talks about, he has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies, that that's our table. Sure, he's there, but he doesn't have a place to stay. No, he doesn't. Unless you give him one. Mm. If you allow him to, he'll pull right up beside you and he'll tear up everything you try to do. Just, just slap him away from the table and tell him, you know where the dogs eat? Under the table. Get! Now go on, get out of here. That's right. Mother don't allow any dogs in this kitchen. Get! That's right. So what he's there. We have authority over him. He's a defeated foe. And he'll keep you chasing yourself and everything else, chasing you down in a parking lot to try to correct you. Yeah. When the blessing is available to that man, I'm, I guarantee he loved Jesus and loves oh, Jesus. Oh yeah, and he's been listening sure. to me. But of course, when I was able to show him that, well, he got a grin on his face and it, you know, it, it settled something for him. I'm telling you, Brother Copeland, the blessing should be part of every baby dedication. It should be part of every water baptism. Sure it, is. it should be part of every new believers class. Yeah. It should be the foundation that we start every new believer with. You are blessed because you have a covenant with God. Yes. When you hold that baby from that mother and father, and you should you should offer the blessing over that child. Well, that's what we're doing, isn't it? But teaching the blessing to this child because that's what a Jewish family does. They bless their children every Sabbath. An, uh, you know, an uh, observant Jewish family. They bless their children every single Friday night. The father will lay hands on his kids and bless them. Mm -hmm. May you be like Ephraim and Manasseh, what's always said. Now that's interesting because that's the sons of Joseph from a Gentile mama. Mm -hmm. And they say that. Why do they always put those two together? Because the scripture teaches us that there was never strife between those two brothers. And there was never strife between those two brothers and the rest of the tribes. They received a full inheritance. They walked in love with each other and faith worketh by love. love. Praise God. And they bless their children every week, the, the boys with that. And the girls, may you be like Sarah and, and all. But we've kind of lost that, that blessing part in that. And we, we'll just say, oh, you just like your old uncle. I knew it. You're going to be that way or whatever. And what we're doing is we're cursing, but that's not who we are. We're people of blessing. We're covenant people, so therefore we bless. And so God's going to instruct, and we're going to get into that, I know, later in the week. God's going to instruct us how to do that, how to bless. Praise God. Amen. Well, we're just about out of time here. We have 30 seconds. Let me say this too. Where's my camera? Thank you. This blessing is by choice for you and me. It's there. Deuteronomy 30, I place before you life and death, blessing and choice and, and cursing. Take your pick. Choose life. Amen. Choose life. He gives you the answer, doesn't he? Come on, give the <laughs> Lord praise. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.